If you stumbled across something while out walking and didn't recognize it, you'd probably ask a friend for help in identifying it. If your friend didn't know what it was, you'd ask someone else. Eventually, if nobody else could help, the question would find its way to a scientist, but even they don't always have the answers. There are some things in this world that scientists simply can't fully explain, and you're about to see some of them in this video. When a man found this giant blue sphere while he was out walking along Pompano Beach in Florida, USA in October 2012, he first thought that it was a giant marble of some kind. When he picked it up and found it to be soft and squidgy, he started to wonder if it was a sea creature. He was only partially correct. Wildlife officials in the state say that it's actually a sea creature's eye but they have no idea what kind of sea creature it might have belonged to. If this is the size of its eye, though, we can be fairly sure that it must have been enormous. When pictures of the eye were posted to social media after its discovery, armchair sleuths all over the world suggested that it might be the eye of a giant squid. Experts from the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission disagree. They think it might be an exceptionally large tuna or swordfish, or perhaps an unknown deep water species that's never before been seen by humans. The fact that an undiscovered species is being considered as a possible contender is a reminder of how little we know about undersea life. Vietnamese authorities didn't know quite what to make of the sudden appearance of three metallic balls in a field in Yen Bai province in January 2016. But they were so concerned about them that they called in the military. Each of the balls is similar in shape and size, weighing approximately 100 pounds. The best theory that anybody could come up with is that they're some kind of space debris, but no space agency has come forward and claimed ownership of them. They also lack any markings, serial numbers, or other means of identification that would normally be expected on anything that had been part of a spacecraft. No video footage of the arrival of the balls exists, but local residents are adamant that they fell out of the sky in the middle of the night. The Vietnamese army wasn't conducting any exercises in the area at the time and denies any connection to the bizarre artifacts. The small craters that they left in the ground are consistent with falling from a great height but the balls show no signs of impact damage. This is a mystery that remains unsolved. The chances of something falling out of space and landing close to you are low, but it does happen. The human race has launched hundreds of objects into orbit over the years, and all of them are bound to fall back down again eventually. Most will burn up in the atmosphere, but a few of them make it through. When this lump of metal hit the ground in Rajasthan, India in June 2020, it resulted in an explosive impact so loud that it could be heard over a mile away. Like the Vietnamese artifacts, the meteor-like object is of unknown origin. It was handed over to the Geological Survey of India for closer examination, but they weren't able to offer any insight. It weighs only six pounds, but left a crater in the ground one foot deep. When police arrived at the scene, the object was so hot that it was still smoking. Unlike the Vietnamese balls, it sustained heavy damage when it hit the ground. A local jeweler examined the object and confirmed it to be made of germanium, platinum, nickel, and iron. Again, this is probably space junk, but it would be nice to know for certain. If you want any further proof that falling space debris is an increasingly common problem, here's a notable incident from Namibia in 2011. This so-called space ball, notable because it looks so similar to the Vietnamese balls, smashed into the ground in a remote grassland region of the country in December of that year. It's 14 inches wide and weighs 13 pounds, but came down so hard that it left a crater one foot deep and 12 feet across. The sphere is made of two halves that have been welded together, but aside from that, it's featureless. Namibian authorities say that the object is hollow and lacks an obvious purpose. 
Both NASA and the European Space Agency have denied any connection to the sphere. Local villagers claim to have heard a series of unexplained small explosions in the region in the days leading up to the sphere's appearance, but the source of these was never verified, and no connection could be established. Who's making these metal balls? What do they do in space? And why are they being allowed to fall to Earth dangerously close to populated areas? In mid-2015, Elon Musk's SpaceX company made a failed attempt to launch a Falcon 9 rocket. Five months later, in November of that year, an enormous piece of rocket debris arrived on a beach in England. The 32-foot-long chunk of the spacecraft ended up an incredible 4,000 miles away from where it was launched from. It was pulled ashore by the Coast Guard after it was spotted floating in the sea close to the Isles of Scilly. The rocket was supposed to carry supplies to the International Space Station, but exploded just two minutes after it launched. Fortunately, it wasn't a manned mission. Is it what it appears to be, though? Although SpaceX believes it's part of the failed rocket, other observers believe it might be part of the CRS-4 rocket, which launched in September 2014 and was considered a success. The two rockets were virtually identical, and despite this piece being so large, there's little to identify it by other than the large American flag and the number 9 that still adorns its panels. Not every rocket part that comes back down to Earth as a curiosity began life as part of a spacecraft. Here's a good example from Australia's Simpson Desert on the border of Queensland and the Northern Territory. It was discovered in 2008, but ballistic experts believe it to be a piece of the Blue Streak rocket that was launched from the Australian town of Woomera in 1966. It was supposed to be a new kind of British-made intermediate-range ballistic missile, but it never entered full production despite undergoing years of tests. Perhaps that's because the tests ended up with results like this one, where the missile got so badly lost that it wasn't seen again for the best part of half a century. The geological survey team that found it spotted it by accident while performing an aerial survey of the area. They initially believed it to be yet another piece of space debris, but that almost certainly isn't the case. The markings on what's left of the rocket shell are distinctive and strongly link it to the British military project. Let's move away from space junk now and focus instead on some strange geoglyphs in the Amazonian rainforest. There are more than 450 of them in the Brazilian state of Acre, and their purpose is unclear. Archaeologists have been able to determine that the glyphs were made after humans had already begun to alter the terrain and ecology of the area, but they can't pinpoint why. The glyphs are enormous, almost 40 feet wide in places, and carved 12 feet deep into the earth. Some of them were made as long ago as the first century, although the most recent of them don't appear to have been added until the 15th. Analysis of soil samples taken from the bottom of the trenches has revealed the presence of charcoal, suggesting burning activity went on here. There's a catch, though. The charcoal is about 4,000 years old, so the burning activity happened here a very long time before anybody started making glyphs. It seems that fires were lit to clear the forest, and then palm trees were planted. Maize and squash plants have also been grown here, but only after the creation of the glyphs. If the glyphs have a meaning, it's one that eludes us. The so-called Yonaguni Monument in Japan is such a challenging discovery that there are some scientists who refuse to accept it as a human-made monument at all. It's hard to look at these pictures and think that Yonaguni could have been created any other way, though. The various underwater structures have a symmetry and shape that strongly suggests they're unnatural. Most mainstream scientists claim that our eyes are deceiving us, and the shapes are simply the result of the rocks being shaped by flowing water over the course of several million years. The water theory sounds implausible, but then again, 
What kind of ancient civilization could have built all this? It's 100 feet tall and five times as wide as it is tall, with edges that come to right angles and faces that are parallel. It even seems to have a staircase leading to its summit, where we find a rectangular pool and an aperture in the shape of a triangle. If this is the work of a lost civilization, it must have been a mighty one, and yet we have no idea who they were. If, on the other hand, it's all the work of nature, we need a good explanation of how and when nature makes right angles in stone. We're back to glyphs again now. There are more than 50 large symbols carved into the floor of the Kazakhstani desert, and nobody has any idea who made them or when. Looking at them from above, we can see rings, crosses, and even swastika-like designs made from earthenware mounds. The largest of the symbols is over 1,300 feet across, larger than most commercial aircraft, but even the smallest covers 200 feet from end to end. The best guess of archaeologists is that they were created about 2,800 years ago. If they are right, that would date them to the beginning of the Iron Age in Kazakhstan. A controversial report that was published in the New York Times in November 2015 suggested that they're closer to 8,000 years old and, therefore, the oldest known geoglyphs in the world. The Mahanzar culture lived in this part of the world at that time but have never previously been thought capable of making anything like this. Were they a way of marking territory? Do the remains of structures that have been found within the glyphs mean they were lived in? More importantly, will we ever get to the bottom of this? We wish we knew. The Potomsky Crater is so big that you can see it from space. It looks like a puck mark on the surface of Irkutsk, Siberia. Whatever created this colossal dent in the earth must have been gigantic and would have hit the ground at immense speed. Despite that, there's no record of the impact in the region's history. That might be understandable if the crater was made hundreds of thousands of years ago, but scientific evidence suggests that it's only four centuries old at most. The lack of any evidence of a meteor strike has led to suggestions that an underground pocket of gas might have exploded and shattered the Earth, but the shape of the crater doesn't support that idea. To make things stranger still, the trees on the edges of the crater have been proven to grow faster than the trees in the nearby forest, despite the fact that they're the same species. That suggests that the trees have been exposed to radiation. But where would that radiation have come from? This is a huge mystery hiding in plain sight, and yet nobody seems to be interested in trying to solve it. There are other craters in Siberia worthy of investigation, but perhaps none more so than the Badagaika Crater. It's already so huge that it's been nicknamed the Doorway to the Underworld, and yet it's still getting bigger. The crater is what scientists refer to as a megaslump, a depression in the ground caused by Earth giving way underneath it. It's more than half a mile long and nearly 300 feet deep, and it gets 30 feet longer every 12 months. These are all remarkable statistics when you consider the fact that the crater didn't exist at all until the 1960s. It will soon reach a neighboring valley, and when it does, Scientists fear that the entire valley could collapse. Experts think that the constant growth is down to the slow but escalating thawing of Siberia's permafrost, coupled with deforestation activity in the 1960s. The deforestation robbed the ground of its summer shade, and so it heated up, melting the permafrost and creating a series of collapses that eventually caused this hole. If it truly is the door to the underworld, it might well reach it soon at this rate of sinkage. High on a hill above the South African town of Machadodorp is a fabulous collection of Bakoni ruins. They include stonewall terraces, roads, and fields that were once farmed. 
Historians consistently cite these ruins as evidence that South Africa was far from the primitive, barbaric place that European colonialists claimed it to have been prior to their arrival. Some historians go further, though. They claim that the ruins are evidence of a highly advanced technological society that's been almost completely forgotten and overlooked by history. Their intensive farming and cattle management system is without parallel in Southern Africa. However, we don't know when they lived. The most recent of the ruins here can be dated to the 16th century, but there are some suggestions that a primitive human species lived here as long ago as 200,000 years. It's here that the Leidenberg heads were found. These unique artifacts date back to the 5th century but their origin has never been traced. Some people also claim that the Bakoni also built the ancient stone circles in South Africa, although that can't be proven. Have we underestimated the Bakoni? How far back in time does their line go? We simply don't know the answers. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!